the ECE and in general to all the faculty. Uh, I strongly believe that uh, once you have joined here uh, in the FDP, you will continue uh, interacting with us. And I wish to see you personally and um, uh, you know, have a personal interaction uh, with you. Uh, thank you so much once again. And I'm, uh, I, I'm confident and uh, really happy that this uh, set of faculty members are going to be really benefited uh, you know, out of your uh, interaction, not only, as I said, as FPP, but in other directions too. I once again request all the faculty of all engineering colleges and uh, our college also to explore the fantastic possibilities of uh, getting a professor onto your uh, you know, board of the college and uh, get the benefit of sharing his experiences for the benefit of the institutions and individuals. With these few words, I thank once again uh, Dr. Rao um, for being with us today. Thank you so much, sir. And I wish all the best uh, the, all the faculty members and congratulate uh, Dr. Ravi, HODEC, for organizing such a wonderful uh, FTP of AICT. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thanks for <laughs> I have uh, really, really happy uh, seeing you after uh, yes, sir. <laughs> years, years. And uh, I don't know whether I'm eligible for uh, all the showers. Mean, no, 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 no. You, you are perfectly eligible, sir. We are, you are perfectly eligible. <laughs> But, I'm highly uh, elated. Once again, I'm saying I'm highly elated to have you yes, with us today. Thank you, thank you sir. No, it no, is bottom my, of my heart. Yes, sir. It's my privilege, sir. The moment uh, Ravi Garu called me, I said uh, one date and then, uh, I mean, again, the BOS meeting is there on Saturday, actually. Uh, so I okay, requested sir, him and uh, kindly accepted and then uh, he has given me the opportunity. So uh, it's nice uh, gesture from your part, sir. Uh, yes, let sir. me do my part. Let me do my best uh, today. Uh, Very coming uh, two hours, uh, whatever little things I know, uh, let me share, sir. Thank okay. you, sir. So yeah, because of bandwidth issue, you, just I'm closing the video. Uh, yeah, only, yeah, audio only, uh, I'll I'll make it. I think uh, the PPT is already visible now, sir. Internet of Things, uh, EMC challenges. Yes. Earlier it was visible. Now it is not visible, sir. Not visible, sir. Okay. Not visible. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I'll I'll show it, sir, again. Okay. I will I will I will, I will uh, stop and then I'll I'll share again. Okay, sir. Okay. Right, sir. Please, sir, go ahead. Sir, is it visible now? Oh, it is visible, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Is it visible, sir? Visible. Yeah, yeah, visible. yes, sir. Okay, sir, okay. That is uh, actually, uh, what is their uh, PDF document? This is PPT. Yes, <laughs> Hope. Uh, is it okay, sir? Uh, it is clearly visible, sir. Okay, Very sir, good. Right. Right, sir. Right, sir. Right, sir. I will close my video. Okay. I think audio is audible, sir. Audio is perfect, sir. Okay, sir. I will continue, sir. Please, right. please go ahead. Right, sir. Thank you. Uh, right. Uh, good morning to all the participants uh, uh, from different institutions across India. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, listening uh, uh, for the last few minutes, whatever principles are uh, said about me. Uh, perhaps uh, this title uh, uh, related to EMI, EMC, uh, may be uh, perfectly not suitable for the theme of this particular ACT FDP, but I feel and hope that uh, every one of you will uh, understand why this topic is uh, essential uh, for computer science, for ECE, for electrical, for mechanical, for uh, all the engineering branches as of, I mean, as of today, because we are neglecting a lot of issues uh, at home, at office, in society, uh, and wherever we we go, maybe in airports, maybe in railway stations, maybe in uh, um, our travel, anywhere. Because uh, this electromagnetic interference and electromagnetic compatibility, these are the two key words uh, I want to focus today. And the relationship with engineering, for example, I'm talking. Uh, every every one of us having a, uh, ground ground connection at our home, right? I hope and wish uh, everybody can able to say yes, but uh, maybe uh, mics are uh, muted. Uh, but the point is, what is that uh, ground connection? Why it is required at home? What is the purpose of that? If the ground connection, that's what earth connection, earth point is not properly there, what are the uh, 
uh, repercussions at home. What happens to our computer? What happens to our TV? What happens to our refrigerator? What happens to our uh, plug points? What happens to our charger? What happens to our mobile? Look at that. Look at these uh, issues. So what is the perfect connection? How it is related with all these uh, devices, electronic and electrical devices? How do we give protection? Is there any science or any engineering subject is that teaching the, all these things? Hence, it is essential uh, part as of uh, uh, my uh, current research area is concerned. Uh, I'm guiding uh, two scholars in this area uh, and with the help of uh, uh, Samir industry in Vishakapatnam, Samir, that is the Society of Applied Electromagnetics Engineering Research. There are only five labs in India. Uh, one of that uh, lab is in, uh, situated in Vishakapatnam. And uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm privileged uh, to be associated uh, with that particular industry, national industry, uh, research industry, to be frank. Uh, I'm the chairman of that particular uh, project review committees uh, of Samir Vishakapatnam. So that's the reason we are offering uh, this EMI EMC course as elective. In fact, the JNTU Kakinada syllabus also, this course is there as elective. I don't know how many of uh, the teachers already taught or involved. Actually, I have prepared syllabus uh, five years back. For the last five years, I'm teaching this subject and I'm guiding the scholars and I'm associating with the industry with all this. Uh, why I'm telling these things, maybe some people uh, may feel it is a uh, new one, it is uh, not related in that in that sense i'm talking so let me uh, uh, focus on a few issues not all few basic issues only then you'll get some idea then later on if you're really interested to work towards it yes a uh, lot of material is already available in the internet so that you can download and you can prepare and you can uh, proceed accordingly okay so with this introduction let me uh, how uh, the, this uh, electromagnetic interference and uh, electromagnetic compatibility is related with IoT because IoT everybody knows it, Internet of Things because uh, this is the era. This is the era where we are living uh, with uh, all these appliances and whatever you are seeing here. Um, what about uh, uh, RF-based connections or internet-enabled devices or? Uh, industries around us and then uh, the missions, sensors, tools, processing uh, units and analytics and then connectivities, alerts, etc, etc. All these things uh, are well connected, but this EMI, electromagnetic interference between any two devices, between any two devices, it is, it is, it is coming like uh, Corona. Corona, we cannot see, right? Uh, we are wearing masks. We are using sanitizers and between uh, five, 10 people, we don't know uh, who is having that kind of symptoms, but still uh, if you are not immune, obviously we can able to attract that particular uh, disease, right? Similar to that, I can equate Corona with EMI. That EMI is not visible. Interference is not visible, but it will affect. It will affect very seriously to human beings, to devices, to the environment. Right. So, how it is being um, at, across the world, how it has been uh, tested, how it has been uh, identified, how it has been communicated, how it has been tested, how it has been uh, eliminated. Eliminated in the sense, uh, like uh, for Corona, we got vaccine, right? Uh, different vaccines are there across the world, but uh, we are having COVID shield and Covaxin in India. I don't know how many of you are crossed 45 years and how many of already taken uh, that vaccine, but I have taken vaccine. Uh, I, I, on this platform, I advise, uh, please go and uh, uh, take that vaccine because that's the only way where we can protect ourselves and we can protect our uh, uh, family members as well. Okay, so similar to that, that EMC, Electromagnetic Compatibility Engineers, EMC Engineers, like computer science engineers, like electrical engineers, like EC engineers, and in that ECE, maybe electrical, maybe computer science, maybe mechanical, anybody can opt, anybody can able to develop, can become EMC engineer as a, as a, as a specialization uh, uh, towards uh, the coming five years to 10 years. Certainly this area is very much required across the world. 
I'm very sure about it because without which no device will come into the market. Already it is there in Europe, in Europe, in America, in France, in uh, all advanced Germany, in all advanced countries. It is already there as a mandatory norm. The moment anybody is manufacturing any mobile or any TV or any computer uh, that is to be marked as EMC certified, you can, you can see your laptops, you can see your mobiles backside. You can see CE. C, E, these are the two things are visible. C means compliance. E means electromagnetic interference. C, E symbol, you can see on every electronic device. C, E, compliance of electromagnetic interference. That kind of stamp is very much required. This is the major thing, hurdle for all our manufacturing companies in India. Because to follow those mandatory norms across the world, it is very, very tough, very tough norms are there. And to meet them, we have to spend a lot of money as well. There's a, there's a basic difference between um, China mobile versus uh, the Apple phone. Why Apple phone costs around 60,000, 70,000, 80,000? Because they follow those norms. And the best example is the normal phone, the moment you speak about 15, 20 minutes, it gets heated. Whereas Apple phone, if you use it for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, still, Still, that heat, yes, it is there, but it's all in permissible limits. Permissible limits. So that is the design. That is the design of the PCB. That is the design of the particular antenna. That is the design of the particular device. That is the that is the importance of the connecting connecting all the assembly assembly unit. That's the reason uh, we have to learn this particular area to become some expertise at least. In India, if any industries, already industries are coming up in make, make in India uh, slogan for the last five years, slowly, slowly, slowly industries are slowly, electronic industries are, manufacturing industries are coming up. But to compete in at global level, EMC engineers role is very, very critical. So I request and suggest, please start this course at your respective colleges, respective courses, respective branches as elective, because under national education policy, you can start. You can start and then uh, on the R20 regulations, uh, uh, all universities are advocating uh, open electives, all universities are advocating uh, non paid courses, all universities are advocating uh, um, optional subjects, optional courses, open electives, right? So every possible chance is there uh, to make your students employable, employable. Hence, this is the best uh, platform I can assure you uh, where, uh, in which area I'm working for the years. Right. So what is the problem? <clears throat> uh, what is that particular uh, design uh, issues? Uh, how uh, the coupling can be uh, done and how we can able to um, reduce whatever I said or some small, small things I told in a basic level, but uh, at uh, design level, yes, what is the problem? How to address? So RF-based devices, normally uh, they use electromagnetic radiation for communication from one end to other end. And uh, obviously uh, other devices are also working in the same frequency or maybe another frequency ranges so that the interference always is visible, always is visible in the sense we can experience it. We cannot see, we cannot smell, we cannot, uh, uh, I mean, we cannot uh, touch it, but we can experience it, the disturbances. And uh, the best example uh, I can say, while you're traveling in a train um, with some, some speed, whenever it is crossing uh, a bridge, whenever it is crossing uh, electric traction or so, your uh, signal suddenly gets dropped. There's nothing but electromagnetic interference. That's it. While traveling in car also, whenever uh, you're crossing 80 kmph, 90 kmph, suddenly with one uh, hand to other hand, automatically you can shift. Then the signal will get, gets dropped. That's because of electromagnetic interference. We cannot uh, visible, we cannot see all those things, but they're all uh, experiences. Everybody experiences all these things and we cannot focus on that. But EMC engineers, they focus on it. They focus on it provided we give training, right? So when these devices are not properly protected, then uh, the radiation and uh, increases 
and the communication uh, signal filtering will not be done properly so that the ability of communication then overall performance uh, can be depleted can be what do you call deviated so whatever norms we put about gain uh, bandwidth uh, what you call all the parameters all these things uh, they vary after the design once we don't give a proper protection for this particular thing if you don't focus on this area our designs will not be suitable for industry they will not be so that's the main hurdle for all of us uh, not to compete at global market especially in electronic manufacturing there's a reason chinese and japanese koreans they're all so superior uh, starting from capacitor starting from a small ic starting from a resistor starting from all these things the quality is concerned so they follow the norms because they captured the market long back hence uh, we are struggling we are importing look at that recent uh, statistics are telling we are depending on china even now almost 80% import imports are there so starting from toys starting from electronics starting from anything why because we are producing a lot of engineers from our country but we are not uh, in a position to manufacture whatever uh, needs we require so this is a big uh, gap as far as uh, the production of engineers versus uh, uh, production of uh, uh, daily needs hence every one of us should think in the direction and in order to uh, keep our students uh, I mean employable and in order to keep our society uh um, self sufficient based on our own uh, manufacturing units and their on their I men so on so forth so um, every one of us should think in the direction this is one of that particular solution i'm talking about i'm not saying that it's a permanent solution but one of the solutions if you think all of us we think in uh, the positive way right so what are the challenge <clears throat> the automatic compatibility as i said it's like a vaccine it's like a vaccine for corona emc is uh, a vaccine for interference automatic interference so where uh, the product will be will become more uh, more immune and uh, the system designers uh, they can reduce the automatic noise and uh, they can make that uh, any complex system will work and uh, additionally Uh, the emission and immunity of uh, the products uh, where uh, in electronic design they can able to reduce so emission is electromagnetic radiation emission and immunity in the sense for when we get immunity uh, by by taking good food right similarly the by good design with having good design uh, that circuit will get uh, immune from noises unknown noises unwanted noises all these issues which is not visible which is not uh, we cannot able to see them hence we have to reduce those things at the time of design itself so the failures uh, based on a single test during certification process where the massive time and monetary delays for the production so if you don't consider uh, these things at the beginning of the design what happens uh the failure will come because that uh, the test report after the product has been uh, developed you have to get the emc certification then uh, they will reduce I mean they will reject then what happens our money our time and effort all those things will will be at loss hence the variety of emc tests they are available uh, across the country I mean across the world and where the samir the samir you can you can type it in google you will get lot of information uh, they are doing their best Uh, in order to support the electronics industry especially uh, they are supporting uh, for uh, isro they are supporting for drdl they are supporting for drdo all the labs because all the test equipment most of them are indigenous now for all the satellite launches and all the uh, advancements in electronics especially for uh, defense and especially for uh, communication based and they are all being tested in samir labs uh to the bank zoom possible extent and uh, based on that only uh, they are exploring different uh, lots and accordingly um, all they are advocating the nearby institutions to proceed accordingly 
So I'm I'm sending my MTech students to there uh, for projects. They're learning and they're absorbing. They're absorbing at uh, suitable places. So with that uh, idea only, I'm talking like this. So the common EMC tests were measuring the conducted and radiated emissions for a device, uh, and such as harmonic distortion and testing high frequency induced disturbances, etc. You can see the figure. This is nothing but an aquatic chamber. This is an aquatic chamber where these radiations are absorbed with the material used inside, and whatever device is under test, they will that will uh, that will give you perfect readings without any interference. Once that particular test has been done in that particular environment, we can say that that device is uh, your uh, test device. We can take it as a uh, real-time uh, testing device so that based on which reference, you can, you can manufacture other devices. So that kind of uh, mechanism, that kind of procedure has been adopted uh, across industries as of now. As of now, it has been done, it has been doing. So this is, I mean, establishing this kind of uh, facility, it's in terms of crores. Uh, so in Samir Vishakapatnam, they spent 10 crores uh, to make that uh, facility ready. Of course, the grants are there from central government. Uh, so that's the reason they can. But as far as the private colleges or private, I mean, our university also, we don't have that facility because it's uh, very too costly. And then okay, that's the reason we have to have MOUs, we have to have, uh, some kind of uh, uh, collaborations or associations with industries so that uh, teachers can learn and we can able to teach them in the classroom. We can able to send them for uh, industry visits. We can able to send them for uh, projects. So this is how uh, the NBA norms or NAC norms or NIRF rank, ranking or any other, uh, any other things. Uh, obviously, uh, they look into these kind of collaborations. So this is the one area where you can collaborate uh, with the industry nearby. So, what is coupling? So, the coupling normally uh, radiated coupling and uh, the radiation from one device uh, to the other device. You can see uh, there are two devices, and uh, the red lines indicates radiative coupling, uh, and uh, blue light, I mean, blue arrows, uh, conductive couplings. So, conductive coupling. Uh, through wires, the, between two devices, any wires are there connected so that we can able to, but radiative coupling, which we cannot see, that's what I'm talking from the beginning, the electromagnetic interference, which we cannot uh, see, which we cannot see, and which we cannot taste, which we cannot touch, we cannot sense it, but still it affects. So, hence, we have to shield it. How to shield it? Uh, we have to shield with independent devices. Uh, for quick uh, solutions, but in a complex systems, radio coupling can occur within a single device. And in that case, the AMC analysis of the circuit design may be needed. So between two devices, we can able to shield it. But if in the same device, say for example, take your mobile phone, the mobile phone has been designed in such a way that for audio, for video, for camera, for uh, internet, for banking applications, for what not. Uh, for shooting, for uh, either people are taking, uh, I mean, pictures of, I mean, uh, what do you call it? Uh, movies also they are editing with uh, mobile, right? High end mobiles. So they're doing n number of functions. So while doing n number of functions, n number of devices are there inside, both hardware and software. So obviously, the inside uh, issue, inside between two devices, between uh, the PCB to another one, obviously the issues are there. So how to avoid it? where the EMC testing is required. How to do that? There's a procedure, there's a norm, there are standards, right? The Indian standards are there, European standards are there, global standards are there, right? So accordingly, we have to um, focus on those uh, tests, that those procedures, and accordingly, we can able to learn. Uh, if, you have, uh, if you have interest, a lot of material is available in the internet. Right, the EMC measures can be taken to mitigate interference between two devices or many intra devices, those are coupling. And we maybe between, um, uh, look at that, you can see uh, broadcasting receivers, 
you can see IT devices, you can see laptop, you can see dish TV, you can see uh, what do you call broadcasting stations like microwave towers. You can see electrostatic uh, discharges are there nearby. You can see that uh, red, red, red uh, star, red star is there. Look at that, which is unknown, unknown. Suddenly some thunderstorms are there. So ultrastatic discharge will come. So EM interference, electromagnetic interference, and the malfunctioning may happen to your laptop, may happen to your uh, receivers, TV receivers, or uh, whatnot, or anything. And in fact, uh, what the research says <clears throat> that young children and old people, they're also getting affected because of radiation. Unknowingly, their brain cells getting damaged if they exposed to this particular radiation for a period of time. And IIT Mumbai, uh, one group is working on this and they're publishing papers. And based on that data only I'm talking, <clears throat> they're publishing papers <clears throat> at regular intervals uh, for the community, for all the society people to give awareness because it is dangerous for a period of uh, exposure. Hence, we have to keep our mobiles away from our uh, body, especially keeping on our pockets and then uh, using them uh, hours together. Please advise your children. Um, unfortunately, for the last one year, <coughs> people are using, sorry, people are using online mode of classes. Teachers are exposed, students are exposed over the, over the hours, two hours, three hours, four hours daily. No, I mean, we cannot, I mean, we cannot avoid, but still we have to be cautious and um, we have to see that uh, the CE, that complaints of electromagnetic interference symbol is there, is it certified or not? If not, you have to go for that certification uh, by asking uh, the respective uh, company people, they, certainly they will uh, provide, <clears throat> if you demand, they will provide. That kind of facility is also available these days so that be cautious with young children, be cautious with old people because uh, we don't know uh, why they get cancer, why they get uh, brain hemorrhage, why they get uh, sudden headache, why they get a reeling sensation, why they get all the vomitings as well. So all these are side effects for radiation. Doctors also still they are doing research on this. <clears throat> Many of them don't know <coughs> because this is a new science, new area. Hence, we have to be cautious because we know this is the, this is the basic reason. So engineers, uh, doctors, they have to work together, especially for this kind of side effects. Okay. The best example I want to cite here, the chemotherapy. Everybody knows it, right? That is the therapy being given to the cancer patients. So what is the process? Electron gun is there. They will identify the cancer cell. The electron gun will radiate signal, high frequency signal to kill the cancer cell. Followed. Do you know what happens actually? What is the intensity of electronic that electron gun? What is the what is the signal that processing the cancer cell? For example, the cancer is there at uh, uh, in the stomach. I assume for a for a boy or girl or whatever. As a person. <clears throat> so, what kind of intensity we have to give? What happens to nearby cells? How it is uh, dis I mean, disturbing other cells? What are the side effects? So, why hair fall will be there for cancer patient under chemotherapy? The hair will be lost. Why it is lost? Look at that. It is a radiating effect. Radiating effect on a biological cell, disturbing the whole human body. And accordingly, those are the side effects that are visible. It takes a lot of time. <coughs> Look at that in our society. The great uh, Yuvara Singh has undergone that. Manisha Koirala, the cinema actress, film actress, has undergone the process. All there in the newspapers. But look at that. None of them has been treated in India. That is the bottom line. So that's what my point here. So to make the treatment, to make the engineers, doctors to work together. This is the science. This is the new area. People should talk. People should speak. Students should learn. Teachers should learn. Institutes should offer. 
all these things should happen simultaneously <coughs> that's my request sorry <coughs> Right. So, the intra device coupling and then uh, signal integrity, then communication losses, the power signals uh, which are influenced by another devices internally or externally, they're all the means and uh, processes for this particular issues. So, basically categorized into four types where based on the poor circuit layout design, which are unintentionally uh, occurring and uh, induced currents, current loops, they may lead to electromagnetic interferences, maybe internally, maybe externally. But luckily, there are various ways of avoiding these coupling faults and many mitigation efforts that can be taken into account to reduce EMC. So, what is happening, what is actually happening in industry, they're identifying and they are going for uh, some mitigation paths, that is shortcut paths to reduce it, not to completely avoid it, to reduce it, so that they can get certification. That kind of process industries are following as of now. So that is the bottom line. So, for example, reducing common trace length of different circuitry loops for implementing star point topology can apply uh, to reduce the amount of galvanic coupling occurring in your circuit. Look at that circuit. Look at that the PCB traces. Look at the connectors. Look at the wires. Look at the connectors. Look at the devices interconnections. So, if you reduce the operating frequency, the length of the parallel traces of different signal types decreases. The capacitive coupling. So, there is inductive coupling, capacitive coupling. Those are from EC background, electrical background. Certainly, they can able to understand what I'm speaking maybe from CSC, maybe from mechanical. So what is the issue is capacitive coupling, inductive coupling, yes, capacitive coupling, what the normal is C equal to, what is that uh, capacitor uh, uh, value uh, in terms of current, in terms of voltage? What is the voltage? Voltage across capacitor, what is the current through the capacitor? Similarly, current through the inductor and voltage across inductor, basic things network analysis. So, what, what are the influences? Because rate of change of current, rate of change of voltage with time. So, it, it, it varies. Hence, we have to be cautious what the length of it. So, once the length uh, reduces, obviously, inductive uh, coupling will reduce and then uh, the, this must uh, minimize circuit loop size. The loop size is reduced inductive coupling we can minimize and accordingly that particular associated things can be minimized. This is a small example I want to I want to suggest because this can be done at the initial stages of design. So this is the example of poor circuit layout that uh, LMR33630. This is uh, that particular uh, uh, one, one of the uh, subjects uh, which I'm dealing, this is uh, the figure has been captured and uh, the Texas Instruments, uh, where you have Texas Instrument supported labs, uh, we, we have those things and you can have that, uh, what do you call, uh, the boxes are there, they supply those boxes for the students for experimentation so that uh, this particular layout, they give uh, soft copies and uh, accordingly, uh, the C in and C out sharing the same ground return, common impedance coupling. So that causes a lot of interference that look at that, the blue, the blue uh, ellipse and the arrow mark. So that causes uh, the issue, common impedance coupling will couple noise currents and uh, the buck converter to the output voltage drive. So uh, these kind of issues uh, one should identify at the design stage itself to avoid interference so that we can provide some kind of solution in terms of compatibility for the whole circuit, for the whole device, and there itself, we can protect the human beings, those are those are using the particular device. This is very, very neglected area uh, as far as uh, uh, our country is concerned. Uh, we, we, we don't uh, worry uh, about our life. We don't worry about our, uh, what do you call, quality of life as well. So all these issues uh, to be 
to be watchful, uh, to be followed. <clears throat> so concept of partitioning circuit functions, then uh, what is happening at uh, RF circuitry, what is happening at power supply, what is happening at uh, digital circuitry, what is happening at Ethernet, what is happening at IO connectors, what is happening at filters. So when better sense to look at uh, switching mode power supplies, then make sure the related circuit loops are minimal. And it's important for fast bus IO devices such as internet, such as USB, such as uh, IO connectors. We don't want their uh, clocks running all over the board. So sometimes uh, it's better to locate DC DC converters uh, nearby they are powering to, to make sure that we have to follow all the precautions and keeping current loops minimized and ensuring solid return plane underneath. Solid return plane underneath that. That means that's where the circuit the ground point. The whole circuit should follow the ground path informally and correctly. So these are all the things uh, very much this, uh, required at the time of design layout. There's just a few examples. Just I, I, I want to cite. I mean, I want to mention. And when designing a product, where to meet the uh, EMC demands, as I said, uh, different standards are there across across the world. So several tips are there uh, where for EMC white paper. Normally, white paper in the sense uh, that everybody should follow that. So electromagnetically, we have. Uh, different uh, critical things and different non-critical areas. For critical areas, we have to ensure that they're shielded from radiating coupling and then any signal lines which are entering the zone, properly filtered or not, we have to ensure that if any disturbance is there and we have to see that they should isolate from one another and from my primary things and then secondary things, we have to troubleshoot it and we have to go for the next advancement design. This is the first point. Uh, every designer should follow. Second one, how your connectors are being placed. Are placed in one side of the board or uh, uh, other side of the board or uh, high rated interference is there or uh, any enclosure is there, shielding enclosure is there or not. And we have to go for different varieties of shield, shielding uh, procedures as well. So the third one, so consider every trace separately, high impedance traces. So here the point is, uh, capacitive coupling and inductive coupling. As I mentioned earlier, what about high impedance? We, everybody knows that impedance equal to voltage to current ratio. So when it will be high, the voltage is high. When the voltage is high, what happens to capacitor? Capacitor voltage equal to what? Inductor voltage equal to what? We know I equal to C dV by dt for capacitor current is concerned. V equal to 1 by C integral I dt. Similarly, for inductor, current equal to what? Voltage equal to what? So we know those uh, basic formulas. So accordingly, we can able to reduce the impedances. Accordingly, the stray capacitances, the stray inductances can also be, be reduced because there are all the sources for these particular interferences. Normally, we neglect at low frequencies, but high frequencies, they matter a lot. That's what all EC students, all EC teachers, uh, high frequency analysis. If you see Milman Hockey's, I don't know how many people have studied that. Milman Hockey's uh, yellow book, Integrated Electronics, chapter number uh, 11, uh, high frequencies uh, for transistors, for heads, and for all those things, analysis. They, they, he, they, they wrote long back uh, what are the precautions to be made. At that moment, they don't know EMI, EMC, but uh, they have written very, very clearly, very, very cautiously about those things. Similarly, the same thing, those who taught PDC, those who go for uh, that uh, commutating capacitors, uh, what, what, what do you call the multivibrators chapter. If you remember, uh, Bachelor multivibrator giving a trigger, uh, commutating capacitors at one transistor collector point to other transistor base point. So what, what about the transition capacitance uh, place? What about that uh, stake capacitance place? What about that C1 R1 should be equal to C2 R2? What about uh, that uh, commutating capacitor value design can be done? These are all the basic things, primary things. They have written long back. We are teaching to the students all under low frequencies we do in the laboratory. But at high frequencies, 
they all should matter because we neglect in the design at laboratory level but at high frequencies we cannot neglect it so that's what i'm, I'm talking here so capacitors using short circuit high frequency signals right depend on proper placement capacitors can be used to eliminate HF high frequency disturbances but need be optimally placed the placement is very very important ensure that the capacitor is placed where unwanted high frequency signal is directed through the capacitor to a non potential rather than given the option to avoid it that's what i was talking that's the reason i have mentioned the two textbooks millman tob pulse and digital circuits and integrated electronics in the hockey these are the two best books i have ever read as a student as a teacher for the last 30 years of my teaching career so hope and wish you also enjoyed while reading the textbook if not please read and enjoy because the, the best books available as of now right the flexible ferrite absorber sheets so this is where uh, actually from samir uh, we have taken the um, with the permission to have taken the photograph uh, that particular uh, the pcb layout has been done by by my mtech student and the ferrite absorber sheets using the microstrip attenuation method they are using uh, microstrip antenna design they have done it and they have tested it and that's where uh, 5 to 20 dB absorption uh, has been mentioned and tested and accordingly we got it practically as well we have tested with the meters because as, uh, the meters are not available in our university here because as i said it's in lakhs i mean i think 15 lakhs or 20 lakhs each meter cost so we cannot afford uh, from our end uh, for a single experiment or for a single lab hence so we are taking the help from samir and then accordingly uh, we are sending students over there and we are getting uh, things done so as of now this is uh, for the first presentation for today uh, the uh, for iot uh, applications and issues in emc design what about electrical engineers what about ec engineers and what happens to them for design challenges so whether they are really uh, sensitive or not whether uh, they are being useful or not whether uh, we can use that limits uh, for careful design or not whether we can we confirm with regulations can we measure uh, for reduction in um, radiated emissions inductive emissions conductive emissions and can we reduce the coupling issues uh, can we design the iot devices can we manufacture iot device with emc design in order to um, go for uh, the good uh, total products without doubt uh, the growing circuits growing components growing system complexity with higher operating frequencies certainly the designers with emc challenges they so it is imperative to have the deep understanding of emc best practices on modern designs so this is where uh, i want to uh, focus again i want to ensure uh, my conclusion every one of us as a teacher we have to guide our students in such a way that before they buy any product they should know the basic things uh, about what about uh, the issues related to emi what about issues with emc whether we are really uh, it is good product uh, for our health, for our home, uh, for our nearby people as well, right? Okay, so I'll, I'll just uh, stop for two, three minutes. I'll, I'll go to the another presentation. So any questions uh, I wish to answer, if anybody, few questions. Uh, Ravigaru, uh, can I continue another presentation? I think no questions are there. Yeah. 
मैडम मैडम इज इट विजिबल टू यू यस सर विजिबल सर को एक्जिस्टेंस इंट्रोडक्शन टू इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक कंपैटिबिलिटी राइट कैन आई गो फॉर गो अहेड हां यस सर यस सर कंटिन्यू ओके मैडम राइट राइट सो आई हैव गिवन द एरियर प्रेजेंटेशन द ब्रीफ इश्यूज एंड हियर what actually happened with electronic devices across the world so certainly you will uh, you will appreciate uh, whatever i spoke so far whatever i spoke so far they anybody felt that uh, what is this nonsense uh, suddenly uh, a professor from university is talking about all these things which are not connected to me if anybody feels like that for them please focus on this presentation right it's my sincere request so please uh, listen at least listen like a layman and then certainly doubts will come and certainly you can involve automatically by the end of this presentation okay so real life examples concepts standards and how the tests look like these these are the four issues i want to focus on this presentation look at that this is link linked with mechanical uh, faculty if anybody is uh, there in the audience out of 39 or 40 present today a foundry worker died when radio controlled overhead transporter thought out a few tons of liquid metal on him have you understood look at the figure a foundry worker that means in a industry foundry worker is uh, doing his work and uh, there is what do you call a liquid uh, metal he is uh, is is running over the head and it is uh, dumping at some other location which is under uh, radio frequency control suddenly it fell down on one of the worker and those days it happened long back uh, in fact it, it happened in britain so what is the cause of that the accidental signal from a radio transmitter was inter interpreted by automatic system as the legitimate order to get rid of the load so nearby transmitter has been given a signal to upper some other location so that caused the interference and then this particular loop has been break stopped and automatically the heavy load is there no liquid metal that was uh, fell down unfortunately the worker is there under under uh, the particular thing and then he died because it's a hot metal liquid nobody knows the situation nobody knows uh, the particular uh, reason in those days but later on people realized that uh, this is electromagnetic interference that have this is the reason for which it has been stopped it has been interfered i mean interrupted it the, the particular employee has been died that kind of conclusion remarks were made later so this is an example a building worker was burned when touching the load of crane installed for building operations you can see the, these kind of cranes uh, for a huge buildings the so multi storied buildings uh, under construction you can see these kind of cranes a building worker was burned when he touched the crane why because an electric arc due to or rf current induced in the metallic structure by nearby broadcasting transmitter look at that an electric arc due to rf current radio frequency current induced in the metallic structure induced emf we, we have studied that in physics we have studied that in electromagnetic field theory and this is the real time example the spot we are talking about it induced emf induced rf currents caused the nearby broadcasting transmitter and the arc has been destroyed the person who touched the crane because all with metals obviously they are prone for that and the basic reason was different in those days nobody knows it but later on a lot of precautions were taken in building those cranes but the crane operator doesn't know but we should know we should know these things then s anti lock breaking system that is abs where it's happening in aircraft it's happening with cars it's happening with bikes and all aircrafts and automobiles 
it is susceptible for electromagnetic interference these days there's a reason the moment you sit in the aircraft the first announcement comes switch off your mobile put it in aircraft mode don't use it don't talk all these things are uh, instructions are being uh, given by the attenders in the aircraft right this is the reason so accidents being occurred and the brakes functioned improperly because of emi disruptions on anti lock braking systems hence we have to be cautious while using mobiles nearby electronic equipment whenever it is in aircraft whenever it is in even in, in bikes also because all automobile industry completely uh, automobile electronics completely filled with electronic devices all the cars all the bikes everything so be cautious while using mobiles in electronic uh, environment so during early years of uh, the anti lock braking system some automobiles equipped with abs severe braking problems with stretch of the german autobahn there is a company name so the brakes were affected by nearby radio transmitters the near term solution was to erect a mesh screen along the roadway to attenuate the im field strength look at that this is nasa published in 1995 that's the source that means what you understood from this nearby radio transmitters that abs is getting more function hence they created a mesh screen and accordingly they want to attenuate the field strength the electromagnetic field strength so that is the real time example so those who are teaching electromagnetic field theory those who are teaching antennas those who are taking microwaves then they can make use of these examples to inspire your students in your classroom so that they will listen to you properly they will understand whatever we speak properly because mostly um, the tmtl subject and antenna subject the teachers are struggling uh, to 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 inspire students in the classroom i am one one among you in initial days later on later on i realized this is the way uh, to catch hold of their minds accordingly i am taking these examples then uh, i am getting their attention and accordingly the maxwell's equations accordingly all the derivations i am finishing in the classroom by telling one example one derivation one example one derivation like that i am training their minds okay this is a small tip for the teachers so if if any are there in this 40 audience today okay so please apply hope and wish you will enjoy then the railways here there is a black hole autonomous registration system of rail wagons passing checkpoints indicated that wagons enter into some region but never go out of it where it was a black hole for there that was the identification in early days the cause would be radiation from high power radar station nearby newly constructed near the checkpoint burned out electronic components installed on the wagons so look at that the radar station operating with high frequencies interfered with the wagons of electronic uh, loads nearby checkpoint then disappeared for the period of time the people realized that something is there and uh, some black hole is there that kind of uh, thing was there in early days so that is also communication received from one of the sources right then <clears throat> aircraft passenger carry on devices the passenger carry on devices provide separate group of case histories they show that susceptibility of modern electronic systems susceptibility means that compatibility one one level of the compatibility uh, that uh, aboard aircraft to emi from seemingly incautious uh, electronic devices such as portable computers am fm walkmans cassette players dictaphones radios art monitors cellular phones so nasa maintains a database where aviation safety reporting system asrs a compilation of voluntary reports detailing safety problems submitted by pilots these reports are for the most part anonymous with non specific aircraft models and identified operating companies during the period 
1986 to 1995, the database registered in average 5,200 reports a year. Look at that. So that EMI interference, <coughs> EMI interference happening with computers, workmen's, dictaphones, radios, smartphones, those who carry in the aircraft normally. Well, yeah. I hope we have heard just a few before Corona, the Samsung uh, mobile phones were uh, banned to carry with you in aircraft because of certain uh, malfunction. They're not allowed in a check-in box. They're not allowed in uh, other uh, luggage. Slowly, they allowed in other luggage, not in check-in. That means they want to away from your uh, cockpit the radiation, the malfunctioning, nobody should use it. And moreover, they ask you to switch off the mobile phones to keep in uh, the luggage. They ask you not to carry power banks. All these things, why? Why these restrictions? Because of this. Because of this. Those who are not aware, I'm sure uh, you will you'll understand the importance of those uh, restrictions, those precautions. They are putting at airports, they are putting in uh, airport, uh, I mean, at uh, ticket booking counters. Okay. We should cooperate with them. Then, some powered wheelchairs experienced erotic, unintentional, and Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello, madam. Sir, your screen is uh, not visible, sir. Okay, madam. I, I, I'll do it again. Is it visible, madam? Yes, sir. Visible, sir. It's visible now. Can I continue? Yes, Ah, yes, okay. sir. Visible, sir. Okay, small, small disturbance from my end only, okay. right? Okay, sir. Because of internet. <laughs> okay. So, the wheelchairs, or maybe uh, those are from uh, Telugu audience, maybe. Uh, the, we have seen that uh, movie, uh, Nagarjuna movie, Upiri. Uh, so, he, he, he stayed on that uh, wheelchair, right? <clears throat> completely controlled, uh, I mean, one man control, no end of any assistance, that kind of wheelchair, just imagine that kind of uh, wheelchair where the people can go out by their own without any support. So the having some power, I mean, with the battery power and uh, uh, if they malfunction, then uh, the person sitting in the chair certainly gets uh, uh, annoyed, right? Maybe they get fear as well. So the moments, including sudden starts and then uh, wheelchairs, maybe um, stopping and then uh, uh, slowing, I mean, going fast and then all these things are happening. They, they identified at later dates because of uh, police, because of fire, because of uh, commuting, uh, I mean, uh, community broadcasting transmitters. In uh, I'm talking about... Uh, American situation, USA situation, because uh, the transmitters are there, the community broadcasting stations are there between any two villages, any two towns, they're well connected. If anything happens, they announce it uh, in mics and uh, the whole traffic and uh, everything is visible with CCTVs and uh, the transmitters always active. So because of the transmitter uh, signals, <coughs> these uh, wheelchair uh, electronic gadgets getting uh, interferences later they checked as electromagnetic interferences and they have given uh, instructions to the respective manufacturers to look into those areas uh, to reduce those things and then to eradicate those things so those kind of things were uh, there because of uh, some uh, fatal injuries reported 
and uh, some major malfunctioning were also reported and uh, they have understood as EMI hazards. <clears throat> the next one, the ambulances, where uh, we have ambulances uh, across, uh, across on our roads, 108, 104, especially in Andhra Pradesh, and maybe in Telangana. So maybe across country ambulances, everybody knows it, but in ambulance, normally hot monitor is there, hot monitor because emergency equipment is installed. So how susceptible that medical equipment uh, for this conducted and radiated emissions, that's what we discussed so far, because a heart attack victim is being taken to the hospital with a monitor, with a defibrillator attached to the patient. But every time the person turned on the radio to request medical advice, the mission shut down and the patient died. Look at that. The cause is from insufficient immunity of the monitor, defibrillator for excessive radio field, radio frequency field strength from the radio. So the ambulance roof had been changed from metal to fiberglass. Look at the solution. Ambulance roof, if it is metal, it is in attracting all the I mean, nearby signals. Hence, if you make it uh, insulator, then that's what we, we speak in uh, AMTL subject, conductor insulator, I mean boundary conditions. We do a lot of derivations. Take this as an example, cite this as an example while teaching that particular derivation. ER by EI, HR by HI, we derive a lot of things. Okay, on the board. So please teach, teach these things. Certainly, people will get interest. Then, crosstalk, mobile and fixed phones. The antennas of base station of mobile system were installed at the top of high building in the city center. Normally, you can see in high buildings, uh, in a crowded place, a uh, lot of antennas, uh, they fix it. After putting the mobile system into the operation, all the conversations of the mobile users could be heard at every telephone connected to the world fixed telephone installation. Look at that. How? How it is happening? Investigations show that the reason would be coupling between antennas and the wired telephone installation and non-linear electronic devices. And this is also happening uh, sometimes in the mobiles as well. The moment you connect to, to your friend, uh, some other voice you can able to listen. How it is happening? You may, you may wonder, right? This is because of non-linearities. This is the crosstalk because of malfunctioning of electronic devices between uh, between um, what do you call the transmitter versus your mobile or vice versa, whatever it may be. These are all the things happening, but we don't give focus much. But there is a reason. That is nothing but electromagnetic interference. There is a solution that is called electromagnetic compatibility. Who will give? That EMC engineer will give. Who is that EMC engineer? We have to prepare them. We have to nurture them. We have to train them. We have to teach them. Because it's our responsibility. Right. So, when electronic flight control systems were first added to the B-52 bomber autopilot system during World War No. 2, uncommanded activation of Rare flight control surfaces was experienced when the high frequency radio was activated on the board. The cause would be spurious high frequency radio signals induced in the wiring system. It was reported in NASA after studying those kind of effects happened in World War Number no. 2, that is in the early days of radar invention, early days of radar invention, the great Hitler is the, the main source for uh, uh, radar. He, he created, uh, I mean, he made uh, compulsions for uh, Germans to manufacture radars. And accordingly, the radar uh, engineers were developed uh, just within uh, five to 10 years. Especially, they helped uh, for World War II, especially for Hitler. Uh, so that way, Hitler uh, really helped electronic. Uh, Warfare, maybe I can say like that. And then, right? Right. So, backhawk crashes as far as helicopter versus transmitters between 91 to 87. Uh, Blackhawk Army helicopters crashed and killed, injured um, most of the cases due to 
to broadcast transmitters because the cause would be insufficient immunity of flight on board subsystems against high intensity radiated fields that produced uncommanded movements while flying radio broadcast towers. So helicopters passing through radio broadcast towers, they are prone for this kind of troubles. Maybe, who knows, the late uh, Rajasekhar Reddy died to helicopter crash. Late Baliyogi, the earlier Lok Sabha speaker, uh, died helicopter crash. And uh, the actress Soundarya, uh, that helicopter crash died. But maybe investigations were not completely thoroughly done. Maybe, maybe one of the reasons like this, the nearby transmitter causes malfunctions to the pilot because in all these three cases, whatever I have suggested, I mean, just now told, the pilots were also died. So that's the reason we, we don't have any proper evidence for AMI. But more importantly, uh, no such kind of uh, investigation authority also done in the, in the particular uh, direction as well. Who knows? That's the way uh, human life uh, is very, very, uh, very, very essential, I mean, very, very important uh, for these kind of uh, uh, what you call effects. So we should be cautious and we should, uh, we should speak more of such kind of incidents so that many of the people will understand and many of the people will start thinking in the direction and maybe investigations are also may think in that direction in coming years or so if, if such kind of things happen so that the precautions can be taken thereafter. Okay, so that's the only wish from my side. So unintended uh, missile launch. So during uh, the missile launches, uh, uncommanded missile launch signal took place where the contributing factors was crosstalk in the system's wiring. The outcome was year-long redesign and test effort. Look at that. If something goes wrong um, before satellite launch, uh, if we don't take such kind of precautions uh, in any kind of circuitry, what happens? Maybe years, it may take one year or two years or three years for redesign and for relaunch. That's what was happening in from our uh, ISRO it, itself. They planned for certain things, uh, but because of Corona, because of uh, other things, they postponed to next year. Nothing was there in 2020 as uh, the Mangalayan or for the Chandrayaan 2 or whatever, right? Because some of my students are working in this row. What they're telling, sir, uh, the, the components uh, testing and other things were not happened because uh, we didn't go to the particular location uh, physically. So that's the, that's the delay. So six months, seven months delay causes year by year or two years delay. So that is the impact. So if something goes wrong, we have to be cautious. So we have to be careful at the beaming itself. So Poinir is the name of the remotely piloted vehicle. Remotely piloted vehicle where portable remote control box, uh, they are being carried. And during its flight test performed by US Navy in 97, about the uh, the pilot experience a series of uncommanded maneuvers that causes the loss of control and crash landing. So subsequently, investigation found that the remote control boxes received false signals from high frequency communication transmitting antennas located aboard the LOA due to inadequate shielding and cable termination. Look at that. High frequency signals because antennas are essential on your uh, aircraft, on your helicopter, or uh, everywhere, windows, but they they give uh, high frequency signals. So we have to shield for the respective uh, electronic uh, circuitry, which is uh, getting interrupted with that high frequency signal. So that kind of uh, knowledge, that kind of care has to be taken uh, at the time of design itself. Otherwise, all these miss miss things miss, miss uh, missing things may happen. But recently, I think uh, everybody has uh, aware of uh, this particular thing: the crash landing of uh, Indian uh, aircraft, Air India, Air India pilot, senior most pilot was died. 
uh, in India, I think in uh, it happened in uh, Cochin Airport during Corona period. He is one of the best pilots. No such kind of incident happened uh, by him so far. But our passengers were safe. <coughs> but crash landing, of course. There was a rainy day. But all these things. But proper investigations certainly because they do closed room investigations. We don't get uh, that kind of data outside. The, they should have given uh, at least uh, the causes and concerns, uh, at least for institutions for the sake of uh, teaching learning processes. I strongly uh, believe in this because the moment we speak with students, the moment they join the, in any, any place of work, certainly they will take all the precautions so that such kind of incidents may not occur again. That kind of uh, thing should be should have been done uh, at appropriately. Appropriately, that's what my wish actually. That's the reason I'm I'm I'm, I'm quoting uh, the newspaper incidents with whatever uh, area where I'm working in and whatever examples I'm citing. Don't uh, I mean don't think otherwise because this is how uh, I, I was habituated. Uh, to teach my lessons and uh, to involve uh, with, my, with my heart and mind together. Okay, so if you do it, certainly uh, you will also enjoy, right? So antennas are the prime source of these kind of uh, problems, especially high frequency antennas. So the British ship uh, Sheffield, the name that the, the most sophisticated uh, anti missile defense system available, despite the fact that. During the World War, 1982, Falklands War, sorry, not World War, uh, Falklands War, 1982, it was hit by exo exocet missile and uh, sank with heavy casualties. It was possible because the anti-missile system created electromagnetic interference to radio communication system of Sheffield Harrier jet contingent assigned to the ship. While the Harriers took off the landed, the missile defense was uh, disengaged to allow communications with the jets. That means the window of opportunity for the exo, exo set missile. So this is the NASA reference publication, 1995. So these are all also happen not only, I mean, aircraft, um, and, and it also happens with ships. It also happens with cars. So look at that. So we covered from mobile, from car, from aircraft, from helicopter, from ship, Look at that, look at those uh, devices. It all linked with all engineers, mechanical, electrical, ECE, computer science, whatnot, right? Navy, Air Force, military, so all the domains, all the domains included this, this particular effects. So in mid-May 1984, Soviet ammunition deport dip, exploded, the cause would be that is over the horizon radar, OTH. Those who spoke, those who taught radars, OTH radars that had illuminated the depot. Over the origin radar, this high, the gigahertz range they operate. Because of that, that particular total depot has been uh, exploded. So that's also from NASA reference, the standard reference across the world. So the flight controls. Fighter jet crashed in the vicinity of Voice of America, where radio transmitter, because of the fly by wire flight control system, which is susceptible to the radio waves, transmitted. Then F 16 is inherently unstable. The pilot must rely on the flight computer to fly the aircraft. Subsequently, many of the F 16 uh, were modified to prevent this type of AMI caused by inadequate military specifications on that particular electronic system. This F-16 case history was one of the drivers per institution by the Federal Aviation Administration of the certification programs. Look at that. That's what I spoke just a few minutes back. If the I mean, if the case history is been discussed, has been allowed for the teachers to discuss in the classrooms, and certainly, who knows? At later point of time. The better designs will come and the same kind of uh, mistakes will not happen again and again on the field. So this is this is what uh, also referred in NASA publication in 1995. So tornado fighter case, the another case in 1984 near Munich, Germany, 
a West German tornado fighter flying too close to a powerful voice of umbilical transmitter. So this is where uh, that EMI interference normally uh, causing the problem. The medical equipment cases in modern uh, medical equipment, uh, they have uh, analyzed between 1979 to 1993. So they have received 90 reports related to EMI problems where the users are experiencing medical equipment performance degradation might not suspect EMI as a possible cause. Thus, EMI problems are more likely to be under uh, ported to the FDA, right? So this is what uh, the medical equipment uh, industry, Medical Equipment Association. So they have reported in NASA and uh, accordingly, just I'm sharing with you. An English language journal read over 1 million readers quoted the following story. A pastor in San Francisco wanting to cure his impotence by uh, trying an experimental electronic. So I don't want to read this, right? So see, I just I want to uh, escape that because it's not platform to discuss about uh, see the human beings uh, also getting effect with this particular interferences that's what i said uh, early is children old is people they're also getting uh, affected with emi interferences that's one of the case study has been done by uh, foreign uh, foreigners uh, but uh, it's not the platform to discuss in detail so millions of uh, pensioners using hearing aids were forced to endure 24-hour rap and rock music from 41 powerful radio transmitters aiding Radio 1 network in the UK. It was caused by a flaw in the device that acted as unintended radio receiver in addition to its intended function. So, these are all the issues across the world has been happened and accordingly has been reported. So, electronic pacemakers. So, pacemakers, everybody knows it, uh, being used for uh, heart patients. So, the air traffic and air traffic navigation control systems, but it is only tip of iceberg. It was pointed out by many researchers that users experiencing equipment performance degradation often do not suspect AMI as a cause, and thus the number of AMI problems are never registered. Do you know uh, the, the simple question, how pacemaker works in our uh, body? How that uh, voltage potential is coming uh, for pacemaker? What is the potential required for pacemaker? Is it DC? How much DC is required? And uh, are the pacemaker is using any battery? These are all the questions, right? So that creates a lot of uh, inquisitive uh, attitude towards many people to understand why pacemaker uh, degradation, the performance degradation happens over the period of time. So that is uh, the, what do you call milli, I mean, Tip of the iceberg. So, doctors should know. EMIMC, doctors should know. That's the reason IIT Karakpur, this is the course being offered for uh, medical students as well in IIT Karakpur. Not now. I uh, have attended uh, 2017. 2017, yes. I attended uh, one of the orientation program there. Um, thanks to the IIT Professor Ajit Chakravarti. So, who has given me a chance for me to interact with uh, the students over there as a resource person. And uh, I came to know that uh, that course has been taught to the medical students as well by him. That's how I'm, I'm talking. Okay. So, what are the basic EMC concepts? So, electromagnetic compatibility, where this is the ability of the equipment or the system to function satisfactorily in its automatic environment without introducing any disturbances or anything to the environment. So satisfactory means intolerable and the definition of anything means environment or all situation dependent. Harmful means intolerable interference when the risk of interference and extent of its consequences exceed the acceptable levels. These are all the definitions from dictionary, from electronics dictionary. Ability of an equipment or a system to function satisfactorily in its EM environment without introducing intolerable disturbances to anything in that environment. Right? So, electrical systems, they are everywhere, they are unprecedented, and uh, we have to be cautious with electronic controls in it. 
and intelligence is being added to even the lowest cost products due to uh, general proliferation of electricity, low price of uh, IC functional blocks and progressing in digital signal processing. So the best example is your mobile phone is also your uh, uh, audio device, you are listening songs, you are seeing video songs and you are adjusting uh, all the controls and you are taking photographs, you are adjusting light, intensity, what not, color, everything you are adjusting, how it is happening. There are all sophistication in your uh, mobile, right? No need of computer, no need of camera, no need of uh, audio system, no need of Walkman. A lot of devices were there earlier. Look at that. All are integrated into one single device now. No need to go to bank, no need to stand in queue, no need to go to movie theater to uh, one hour before. You can have tickets, uh, everything, right? You can purchase anything online. No need to go to any store. Look at that. Look at the convenience. But above all, at what uh, level you are exposing to the mobile, at what level you are exposing your body, at what level your, your uh, what you call functions are affected, basic, basic uh, organs are affected. So these are all the issues one, one must uh, aware of this presentation. So life of individuals and functions of society increasingly depend on errorless functioning of numerous systems. Emergency telecommunication, air, maritime, land, transportation, safety system, etc. So most of those critical systems are controlled by electronic subsystems, hardware, and softwares that we know. So, while electronic intelligence, so they also suffer from peculiar performance reliability problems. That is, that electromagnetic interference is one of the major problems related to performance and reliability, common to all electronic technologies. That is the bottom line. So far, I have given a lot of examples, hope and wish. Every one of you will agree with what I said so far for the last one hour, one and a half hour or so. Okay? Right. So, electromagnetic interference is electromagnetic disturbance, that is, which interrupts, which obstructs, otherwise, which degrades the equipment performances. Remember, which interrupts, which obstructs, which degrades the performance of the equipment. So it can be induced unintentionally without uh, without any anybody's knowledge. As a result of spurious emissions, vulnerabilities, etc., it can also be induced intentionally. Some forms of electronic warfare. So electronic warfare. That's what uh, whether you know it or not. Uh, our neighboring countries, China and Pakistan, both are playing a lot of issues with us. Madam, is it visible? Yes, sir, visible, sir. Okay, okay, right. So I thought uh, some disturbance is there. Okay. So both China and Pakistan um, recently have seen the newspaper. The Chinese are occupied, a lot of things, and then later they have gone back, and a lot of our uh, brigadiers, majors were died, and then the other side also they died, and surgical strikes were happened in Pakistan. For the last four or five years, you are listening a lot of stories and seeing a lot of things, right? Now, my question related to EMI is how our people were crossed the border and entered into Pakistan, made the surgical strike appropriately correct within uh, justified uh, time, then how they returned back. But while returning back, one soldier was caught by Pakistan. What happened? How it is happened? Because a lot of story was there related to telephonic, telephonic warfare. So if you are interested uh, on OTT platform in, I think, in Amazon or Disney, uh, URI, U-R-I, URI, there is a movie, uh, well, well done, well drafted, well done uh, by the filmmaker. Absolutely done. We can we can enjoy watching that because all the technical details are also there. So please look into that. And the good movies are also there in Telugu. Ghazi movie has come. Uh, relates with uh, ships and torpedoes and uh, things. And then uh, about space. And the Antariksham, another movie has come. Those are from Telugu. I think, I don't know whether you watched it or not. I'm really, really fascinated towards that. 
So the young director, they have he has done wonderful film. Unfortunately, it was not uh, known to many. That's the reason I'm talking. Right? It's all available now on OTT platform. If you if you have a leisure on a Sunday with the family members with children, the curiosity will be there. Please watch, and please learn. Please watch and learn, because those are all the things I normally advise students these days. Uh, because uh, they are habituated with mobiles, they are habituated with pictures, they are habituated with. So we cannot avoid it. Hence, make use of those things, make use of the platforms, and then advise them, and then ask them to learn, ask them to learn by themselves. Uh, these online classes, for the last one year, uh, online teaching, no. So we don't know whether really learning or really listening or really writing. I don't know. But at least the moment I have given some work or so assignment. Suddenly, they are. I asked those two movies uh, analysis. For many students, have replied back. <laughs> they have done what they learned after seeing the movie uh, about radar specifications, about torpedo specifications, about all those things. They have repeatedly they have sent mails to me. So all of them I kept uh, for my record. Recently, an NBA visit has been happened to us. I have shown <laughs> those things as for an NBA expert, and he really appreciated uh, the effort I've made for the, during lockdown. Okay, so because engaging student minds is very very important. So what they like, what they like the most. So we have to encourage in such kind of thing. And uh, in, in the introduction, uh, uh, Principal Garu said, uh, "My son is studying in IIT. Actually, uh, he studied in IIT, and then now he's in Germany for his MS program. So he got selected from Prime Minister uh, scholarship, but." Uh, I advised him to go to Germany. Uh, the point I want to make here, engaging uh, student mind. So I engaged my son's mind at the early years, spent a lot of time with him as a friend, as a guide, uh, as a supporter, not as a father, not as a teacher. So that really uh, made me happy. That really made him understand what all about studying, what about all about education, what all about uh, society. What all about beyond the country as well? So those are, I think uh, you have kids, right? Please spend uh, some time every day, quality time with with your kids because uh, they are young minds. Uh, we are all working. We are all struggling for uh, their future as well. So spend time, fruitful time with them. This is a suggestion request because uh, I have uh, undergone the process. I have seen the results. Okay. Right. Coming back. So, what are the trends uh, for integration, for uh, increasing complexity, for making electronic systems components? Uh, whether they are vulnerable, uh, whether they are getting electrical influences, uh, how they are getting uh, miniaturization is happening, proliferation is happening, and uh, what about electrical and electronic the combinations, integrations, or how they are happening, and what are the sources, what are the victims, what are the disturbances, how uh, the interference. Uh, uh, is uh, increasing the potential. So, what are the new silicon chips uh, coming up in the market, and how the disturbances can be minimized uh, in the devices? All these things are the trends now. So, EMI, the electromagnetic interference, is able to cause malfunctioning of any electron system component, especially in ICs. So, malfunctioning component can disturb the operation of a total system or subsystem, so that uh, the safety related applications can provoke. Uh, an accident or a catastrophe. Catastrophe means either this or that. So, safety related systems normally electron components, subsystems vulnerable to EMI. Safety means freedom from unacceptable risks, which are harmful for individual or group or the public or society. The consequence of EMI in safety related systems may be catastrophic. That's what I just now mentioned. So, this is not just academic. That's what I mentioned. It's completely linked with real-time applications, real-time um, troubles. So the functioning of numerous industrial plants, communication and transportation systems, health city supplies, the reasons of dependence critically on the errorless operations of electronic mm -hmm. systems, which are EMI susceptible. The EMI MC problems have been discovered past in military applications in 1950s. Now, more and more being suffered in civilian applications as well. Then, once uh, the manufacturer has done his product, if something goes wrong, 
what happens in advanced countries. So they will uh, manufacturer or provider or owner, the operator of an apparatus which causes death, injury, uh, material losses or other forms to third party may be prosecuted, may be prosecuted. Example, to prevent EMI provoked losses, it is illegal to introduce an European market and any device that would produce an acceptable EMI, CV, EMC directive, and the RTTE directive. So here, you have to be cautious about legal consequences as well. The same, the same thing is, uh, is applicable across the world, actually. This is a small example this time I'm showing. So the threats are many EMC related malfunctions, incidents, potential incidents are known, especially to EMC consultants, but consultants are usually bound by confidentiality agreements. And these do not get reported. That's what I was talking. The reports are not available in the literature. So if uh, something goes wrong, so it is suggested that the actual rate of EMC related malfunctions exceeds those reported in the press by several thousands fold or so. An increasing number of these malfunctions will have safety implications as electronic technologies become more widely used in safety related systems. So very it's a cause of concern, cause of worry. Reports are not visible to us, it was not, uh, not available to us, but we have to be cautious with all these kind of things. So how? So neither equipment makers nor plant owners and directors are keen to report to their EMI problems because competition and because the, it could be used in possible legal proceedings. So as a consequence, equipment system data on disturbance emissions and immunity vulnerabilities are most often kept confidential. Possible use of the data by terrorists give additional justification to keep the EMC related data secret. This is another point, another uh, cause of worry. So if the data is uh, out, then uh, that has been used uh, for other purposes. That's what is happening in cyber security. Uh, see, uh, our OTPs are being misused uh, and our Facebook photos are being misused. Our uh, personal data has been, other card data has been misused. So a lot of cases are there. Hence, there's another, uh, another worry. So what is to be done? So no publicly available and reliable statistics exist on the number and consequence of EMI incidents. EMI related threats can be assessed only basing on the case by case analysis, taking into account indirect evidence, relevant recommendations and standards. There's only possibility for assessment. So where to find the standards? IEC standards, where uh, electrical and electronic equipment, ITU standards, uh, telecom union regulations, or WHO, that's health issues, everybody knows these days. So you can get uh, the recommendations and standards from the respective uh, uh, links provided. The warnings are EMC recommendations and standards should not be followed without fully understandable. Then how EMI effects depend on specific situation and EMI environment, actual coupling, these may differ significantly from those assumed in a recommendation or standard. Actual EM environment is subject to change temporarily or permanently due to equipment movement, installation, or modifications, where safety related and other critical applications, temporary degradation of performance or loss of function may not be acceptable. In safety related areas, in critical applications, degradation of performance is not acceptable. That is very, very uh, seriously are uh, taken. That means uh, uh, healthcare, equipment, medicines, maybe household uh, equipment, and like that. So the mobile phones uh, should not blast it. Eh? Some mobile phones are blasted. People are getting died. That is not, uh, I mean, that, that should not be allowed, but it is happening in India. Who is manufacturer? What kind of uh, case has been booked against the manufacturer? Nothing. Why? Because 
uh, we don't have uh, such kind of mechanism <coughs> from central government till now. <coughs> so anybody can um, come and anybody can sell anything to us. We are ready to buy. The only criteria is, is it cheap or not? If it is cheap, we'll buy. Even if we die, no issue. We'll buy first. That is the attitude of uh, majority of the public uh, in India because of, of course, because of uh, financial uh, issues. So, for all these, uh, we are responsible being the citizens of uh, the great country. We should take uh, lead forward to give awareness about these issues uh, for their safety, for their uh, long life. Uh, living so so emi depends on uh, different things so uh, can i stop now for any questions because uh, still a lot of slides are there it cannot be done within 10 minutes or 15 minutes can i stop because uh, all uh, basics are over Sir, one of the question from participants, sir. Okay, please. Explain EMP. EMC. Okay. EMP, sir. Right. Electromagnetic pulse speed. EMP. EMP, sir. Okay, okay, right. right. I, I'll tell you. Electromagnetic pulse, that is nothing but uh, uh, whenever uh, thunderstorms are there, whenever uh, we get uh, the particular uh, voltage being uh, measured, using electromagnetic uh, equipment that is said to be pulse but the short duration very very short duration and that kind of environment has been set up in Vishakapatnam Samir they are they are doing it they are measuring it and but it is very very hazardous and very very uh, what do you call it? very very tough uh, to be in that environment so that's the reason automatic system has been developed to measure it and why it is required because how much energy can be stored and how much energy can be released that kind of thing uh, can be measured with that right any other sir another question sir can emp technique shut down city light and aircraft madam please repeat can emp technique shut down city light and aircraft yes yes certainly certainly yes because EMI interference that may cause trouble for aircraft or anything if we don't provide solution properly. Yes, it is true. Any other? If any queries from participants, please post in chat box. Sir, no questions, sir. Okay, madam. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whether it's really useful uh, or not, but uh, I'm happy for giving me this opportunity. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for giving this wonderful session on uh, electromagnetic compatibility and uh, how the coupling is placed in between uh, wired and wireless with examples, sir. I really, it will be very helpful for sir. Uh, thank you so much for giving this wonderful session and very special thanks from our respected principal sir, HOD sir and all the faculty members. And thank you so much for all the participants and feedback form uh, already posted in chat box. Please uh, fill the form as soon as possible. Uh, thank you sir and thank you all the participants. And the uh, afternoon session will start at 2 o'clock. Okay, can I leave madam? Yes sir. Okay sir. Thank you sir. Okay, thank you so much. Okay.